Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Research Institute's FPGA stand up meeting for the 7th of September 2021. Um, please let us know what you've done over the past week, what you plan to do over the next week, if you have any roadblocks, uh, and if you need any resources. All right. So, uh, Anshul, please, uh, you have the floor. Hi. Hey, um, so, yes, I was on vacation, so nothing for the past week. Plan is again to get um, Beta Linux to work on XC uh, that that C seven zero six. So yeah, I have all the components ready. Uh, just need to get them. Uh, just need to get the card booting via Beta Linux via uh, JTAG. Yeah. So yeah, that's the plan. Uh, no blockers as of now. Uh, yeah, just proceeding that direction. Wonderful. Thanks so much for, for all of your good advice on, on Slack. I've been following along. Oh, Sawato, would you uh, uh, please take the floor? Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yeah? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Uh, so last week, the past week, I was uh, trying to test different uh, sets of parameters. Um, they did not work, and then I realized that um, so Xynix is stream FIFO, you know, even though it has the TID and T user ports, they're not connect, they're not connected. And I was using that to, well, I was planning to use that to transfer the actually the parameters. Uh, so what I'm doing now, I I added um, two FIFOs. Uh, basically, data is going to is going through one, and uh, the metadata is going through another FIFO, uh, and that will sort of uh, when we move to uh, the real system, um, CDMA will eventually um, separate, I think, um, metadata from the data, so the processor doesn't have to move data around. So it's sort of a middle step. Uh, so yeah, I'm still working on that. I, I, so I managed to uh, send data and metadata correctly, uh, but there's something wrong with um, yeah a multiplexer uh, for the bit interleaver. Uh, so I'm debugging that right now. Oh, fantastic. Do you have any, uh, any, is there any resources that you need? Anything that you need? Uh, no, I, I get, uh, I'm just so using um, chip scope. Uh, and hopefully I will, I will get to the bottom. And then, uh, so my hope is, uh, so I'm do. I hope that I'm doing something stupid. And <laughs> um, that will, so when, once I fix, it's sort of all the other configurations will work oh, fantastic. Uh, from yeah from what I looked so I think it's QPSK that d doesn't have the bit interleaver so I think those work uh, yeah so I'm hoping to un unblock myself basically oh very good understand <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool okay uh, Paul Williamson you have the floor Hello. Uh, nothing to report except that I increased the storage size limit on both the uh, Karapi and Chaco Cat to ten times the previous amount because we were running out with Petalimic Petalinux images. Say that three times fast. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Any uh, resources, Roblox? Not that I know of. Okay. Thank you. All right, Shamandra, you have the floor. Um, audio check. Uh, can you hear me, please? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Good. Um, I, I just wanted to, um, and I'm sorry for some echo because I'm going to have to um, just to reduce a little bit of uh, my. Um, I just wanted to show you guys um, that uh, my work is a bit of uh, off the main field from where you are um, because. Um, I'm I'm yet to have a working lab situation, um, but uh, the the way I um, uh, the way I basically uh, did it was that I built a frame, 
Um, so uh, this is actually um, a, a net burner, uh, sorry, this is actually a net burner development kit. This is actually a zinc development kit. So the two will work with the proto board. I'm actually um, just going through developing this uh, test bed um, so that I can actually get to writing control programs that will control the FPGA, you know, fabric or the PS and the PL in short, which Anshul knows. It's the PS and PL, and, and I'm doing it for my own, uh, you know, uh, future projects. But this knowledge itself would be useful for a variety of, you know, utility uh, work on on a, any small set. Uh, because the uh, chip itself, uh, the uh, net burner chip itself is just a one inch by, you know, two inch board. And whenever your future uh, FPGA board is, uh, if uh, I was part of the, the mission, I would then use a little uh, supervisory uh, microcontroller unit to do the low level functions. And then the heavy lifting would be done by the FPGA the device itself but at least we can do battery charging, battery monitoring, thermal monitoring and everything. And now I spent some time um, getting some advice from Bliley and also from analog devices this week. So they gave me some uh, uh, good design uh, tips and everything to uh, be, be, be start the work on laying out something like a, a low phase noise, uh, you know, uh, frequency chain. Um, apparently that's, that's, you know, uh, it's a process that you have to go through. You have to pick the parts and you have to design and then you have to pick the parts again and you have to design again and so on and so forth. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a lot of issues. There is a slight, but, and it's got nothing to do with any technology. It's got to do with power. The USB hub that I have gives power up the power rail the device it, it, it's annoying it, it, it actually is the circuitry is that if you power using a usb3 hu powered hub then if there's a, any device like a laptop on the other end of the usb3 it will also power and you'll have a situation where on the same circuit you're getting power in both directions like this it, 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 it's a slightly uh challenging situation to kind of have to edit, uh, you know, have to uh, go inside the USB hub and cut one of the wires in order for this not to happen. It, it's yeah, a bit of a hard uh, thing. Uh, I've seen no. this but kind of controls are working. The, uh, rem the remote control, the remote LAN, the remote WAN is, is uh, progressing on. That's my report for a while. By, by this time next week, uh, I'll, it'll be done. But I just needed to get, uh, you know, to the point where I have a working uh, complex system for a system of systems approach. Okay, what? I think uh, Anshul has some comments. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah. So uh, I've seen this kind of issue. Um, so it's it's typical of USB CPD issue, and to debug, just just maybe uh, this advice may be of helpful. Uh, so we have uh, USB C PD analyzers. Uh, so you can you can uh, visually verify inspect all the PD packets that are flowing through USB Cs. Um, that might be helpful for you to debug this issue. Okay, thanks. Um, um, I was uh, a, I'm I was I'm out of date with the USB, you know, the latest versions of things, but it's mm -hmm. wonderful technology, but it's unexpected. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think we have nothing but empathy on that. Okay, I'll give a report. Over the past week, uh, made a lot of progress through the formal training from from Xilinx. So I, I signed up for Petalinux uh, class just to to fill in the gaps of of knowledge. Um, it's been very interesting. The class is um, uh, interesting. I'll say again, uh, the 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 lessons have been good. Uh, they are designed to be done on a VM, a virtual machine from from Xilinx, and so that machine is on a ZCU 104. That's really close to a ZCU 106, but there are some significant differences between these two development boards. So what I've done is tried to do everything on the on ours on the remote labs ZCU 106, and this has required adapting and modifying the um, the classwork uh, to a new hardware platform and to also do the things that the VM does for you. The VM is set up, virtual machine from, from Xilinx is set up to take care of lots of things. 
It's very weird. Some of the stuff in the class, they explain the basics in very pedantic detail. Uh, and then they gloss over and assume that you know, for example, how to run a debugger or how to, or they, they give you a script that just takes care of things that you really need to know if you're going to do this. So from a pedagogical standpoint, it's been an interesting experience. Uh, but what I've been able to do over the past week is do applications, compile an application within Petalinux, straightforward at this point, makes sense, uh, and then add uh, TCP IP functions to it. So the latest uh, classwork has been you have a web page, a web server within the, the board. The, you know, the board comes up and it offers you a web server, and the web server exposes some controls that allow you to manipulate GPIOs, which are supposed to blink LEDs. For the ZCU 104, this is an array of LEDs, a large variety of, of processor side LEDs that you can manipulate. For the ZCU 106, there's only one, and it's already taken up uh, with the heartbeat from the, uh, you know, from the image. So there's several things to do from here uh, over the next week, and that's to figure out how to um, manipulate the eight LEDs on the programmable logic side. And this is this goes back to things that we talked about earlier in this meeting. Um, connecting the processor side and the, the programmable logic side to be able to, to control and to, to look at things and, and to go back and forth between the two sides. So for, for those of you listening that uh, are wondering what we're talking about, there's a processor, a hard uh, processor, um, you know, A53, and then there's the programmable logic, the configurable logic, the classical FPGA, and being able to go back and forth and to, to, to give the functions to the appropriate uh, computing part of the platform is a big part of the battle with uh, deploying to uh, an ultra scale or zinc uh, processor. Uh, so that's that's what uh, what I'm learning how to do and it's coming along pretty rapidly. Uh, the thing that most recently was done was learning how trying to learn how to use the debugger. And some very interesting things happened. If you follow the classwork along from Xilinx, you get an error. If you just dump part of the command in uh, uh, Petalinux dash boot and just boot, then it works. Uh, but the networking stuff that they recommend or that they outline in the class doesn't. It fails on both the VM, which is on the ZCU 104, and it fails on ours too. So something has shifted underneath the course material just in the last few months. This is a common problem with any sort of high tech or complex system. You know, we're not immune to that. Uh, but but learning as we go and figuring out how to how to better get uh, leverage on on Petal Linux. So at this point, I'm probably in the mid tier of like, uh, you know, but doing my best to to get uh, as competent as possible with Petal Linux builds and leveraging the hardware that we have in order to assist people that want to test, uh, verify, uh, and explore all the different things that the uh, these large um, chips offer. All right, so in terms of roadblocks, uh, again, logistics, we are still working out how to get the second lab, uh, remote lab up and running. That's working its way forward. Um, not done yet, and I don't have any dates yet. Uh, probably at the earliest is going to be September. Um, and then, let's see, resources, so far so good. So um, I, I think I'm set from where I see. All right, and I think there was a question. Um, just to, um, uh, uh, in the coursework, uh, did you see any mention of low-level um, uh, uh, low level subroutines, I would call them, but low-level library calls to determine um, time or precision time or precision phase of, I mean, any kind of diagnostics that you could request from a program to say what's happening on the FPGA uh, PL side. Um, okay, so I'm going to say yes, because uh, in the in the broadest sense, uh, like pre-compiled libraries and, and things like that are anything that's that's been, any work that's been done you can you can bring on uh, to this particular system and timing and timing analysis are a big deal uh, I know just from from the literature and previous work so I think the answer is yes in this particular course it's it's going to be from a general sort of pedagogical walkthrough and and the mechanics of of incorporating not just you know not just starting your own application which 
has been done now uh, four or five lessons worth, um, you know, but also bringing on board uh, pre-compiled libraries. So if it exists in, especially if it's a part of the IP catalog at Xilinx, then yeah, it's going to be pretty easy uh, to to bring up um, using Petal Linux. In terms of like, well, how accurate do you need to be? Um, yeah. There may be some external circuitry that's required or some some external sensor that's required, and then you do everything that you normally would do to align your your samples or to reduce jitter or to reduce the phase. So all of that stuff is a yeah, you know, but like this particular class is just how do you learn how to use uh, Petal Linux for embedded Linux applications on, on our particular um, SOCs? The reason I was asking is that previous uh, timers. I'm losing part of your audio, so only part of your question I'm hearing. Um, the reason I was asking is that previous, uh, previous uh, find that I did. Uh, okay, I got a, I got about half of your audio, and then it cut out completely. So, so if you write down the question, then I'll absolutely help you out with whatever, whatever I can find out. Uh, yeah, sorry, I, 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 I'll do that for okay. remedy. Yeah, and of course, now your audio is back. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this, yeah, so yeah. Oh, don't worry, I'll fix it up. I'll fix it in post. Um, but yeah, uh, it's weird. It comes and goes. Um, yeah, that's that's it from this end. The next, I uh, didn't admit over the next week, which is always way more ambitious than uh, it should be. Um, but to continue with this material, I'm, well, I'm about half, more than halfway through the class uh, for Petal Linux, and there is a lot of things that, that can be done with the material that we've seen so far. These various lessons can be leveraged into uh, really some useful stuff so that the people coming along after me don't have to repeat the feat. Um, you know, so, and they, I, can, I can start to see where uh, these lessons open up the possibilities of incorporating the GSE and um, you know instead of CGI and basic HTML you know here's it, it's given a blueprint for how to incorporate HTML5 which allows us to give a user interface and start now on the user interface uh, so it's it's all pretty pretty exciting stuff so if all goes well then I'll have more to report along those lines um, over the next week um, but that's the direction that I'd like to start start going in as, as hard as possible. Other things for the FPGA thing is that we are looking at going ahead and deploying the uh, the trends gear. So the trends modules, actually getting them into the case and up and running. And we do have the DVBS2, S2X gear uh, that we can go ahead and get in a case. Um, but so far we're not, we're not producing any waveforms that need to be verified or validated against that commercial gear. I'd like to get there as quickly as possible. Uh, I know everybody's working hard on that. All right, that's it for me. Any last comments? Hi, sorry. Um, I was scrambling to find a mute. <laughs> um, so um, uh, a while ago, I, I was, uh, someone mentioned the, that slight fury board. So I got one and now I'm actually trying to find a, a computer to use it because it's M2 and all. Uh, I was planning to use one, but basically the, the, the one that I was planning to use, they changed. Uh, so I'm sort of trying to find alternatives. Uh, I, If anyone has, I don't know, I have two that I'm sort of thinking, but they're a bit above the the price I wanted to pay. So I will post, I think it's easier if I post a link. Yeah, sure. Uh, if there's like, if there's anything that is uh, that you'd like to um, to purchase, um, let me know. And that's what that's one of the many things we're here for. Uh, so I wanted this to for, for my personal stuff. Um, so I, I was just looking for like guidance, you know, like I use this one is good. Uh, this one has, I don't know, X component, and that's bad because, in all honesty, I have not looked into like details of uh, modern computers recently. 
Yeah. Understand? <laughs> yeah. I just, I understand what what you mean. I uh, I don't look at I don't look at new computers until one of mine dies. So, um, I get very yeah. interested in in how what the state of computing is, and then it's so it's a it's sort of a uh, punctuated equilibrium type of approach to technology. So I I I hear you. Yeah, it, it it it's weird. Like I I I know the acronyms exist. Yeah. <laughs> But <laughs> right. <laughs> apparently, there's like for M2 specifically, there you can use it as SATA, as SSD, or PCIe. Like M2 does not uh, translate automatically onto, you know, each. It, so that's very annoying. But anyways, yeah. I will post a link. Yeah, thank you. That um, I think that would be uh, of great interest to the group. Yeah, if anyone has you know comments, suggestions, and I'll just you know, I'm I am um, I'm open to. Yeah, you're open more. open to advice and and, and all yeah, that. exactly. Very good. Okay, yeah, that's uh, looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, yeah, that um, that's all. Really. All right. Well, thank you everybody for the great uh, stand up meeting for for this week, and uh, we'll. Uh, edit and present the, the video for our YouTube channel and see you on Slack. Cool. Thank you. You bet. See ya. Bye. -bye.